Good evening, and welcome to this week's edition of the Purpose, Value, and Meaning Web Classes. Tonight, we are talking about identifying insecurities to gain purpose. I'm Keisha Golder, and I help women define their unique purpose so they can live a life that they created on their own terms. I also created the Your Life Purpose Makeover Journey, which is a three-stage, nine-step program designed to help you build confidence, live authentically, and get the life that you truly desire. I want to take a minute to remind everyone that there will be a question and answer section towards the end of the presentation. So if you can hold all questions until then, it will be greatly appreciated. Before I jump into what we're talking about tonight, let's do a quick recap of last week. Last week, we talked about distractions. We learned what they were, how they looked, um, why we need to avoid them, and of course, ways that we can overcome distractions that we encounter every day. If you missed that web class and you wanna check it out, you can see the full web class anytime on YouTube or my website, KeishaGolder.com. So what are we learning tonight? Tonight we are talking about insecurities and insecurities are, are something that we all encounter sometimes. You know, sometimes when we encounter them, we know that they are insecurities and other times we are not aware that the things that we are experiencing are insecurities. So we are going to learn exactly what insecurities are, where they come from, how they affect us, and of course, ways that we can get over these insecurities so that we can live a life of purpose the way that we choose to live it. So let's jump right on in. What are insecurities? Insecurities, they are a feeling of inadequacy. You know, you, you just don't feel good enough. And it pertains to an overall sense of uncertainty. The uncertainty that you may feel could be about your worth, your abilities, your skills, and your values as a person. The negative impacts of insecurities can be physical, mental, and of course, emotional. Now, what are the symptoms of insecurities? Just like when you go to the doctor and before they diagnose you with having a cold, the flu, whatever it is that they're going to diagnose you with, they want to know what symptoms you have. So what are the symptoms of insecurity? The symptoms of insecurity are feelings of inadequacy, lack of self-confidence, self-esteem, and self-worth, Feelings of being unable and ill-equipped to cope with stress, generally uncertain about the world around you and the world as a whole, and you're anxious about your relationships with others. So sometimes when people ask us what's wrong, we just use the blanket statement such as I have insecurities without addressing the symptoms that we have. So you may know that you lack self-confidence, but you don't tell someone that you lack self-confidence. You just say, oh, I am insecure. So it's important for us to know what the symptoms are so that we can call out the symptoms and be able to address the symptoms, which in turn can overall help us address insecurities. You, because these symptoms have an impact on our lives and our relationships with other people, but they mostly have an impact on the relationship that we have with ourselves. And being able to pinpoint and address those symptoms can help us when we are going to overcome our insecurities because we'll know exactly what in what symptoms we have so we know exactly how to address those specific symptoms which overall allows us to overcome or work on overcoming those insecurities so there are several types of insecurities some of them are relationship insecurities this is when you don't allow yourself 
to be vulnerable with another person. And it does not have to be um, an intimate relationship. Remember, when we talk about relationships, we talk about friendships, we talk about family, we talk about any type of ship. A work relationship, all of these are relationships. So it doesn't necessarily have to be an intimate relationship. But you don't allow yourself to be vulnerable. You don't want to trust other people. And on an insecure person, it looks like you do not trust that person, no matter what they say, no matter what they do. You are always second guessing their actions and their words. Relationships insecurities not only affect you, but they affect the person that you're in a relationship with. And I'm quite sure we've e either come across through um, our connections or even seen in TV shows where someone does not trust their significant other and they're constantly accusing the significant other of cheating or doing certain things and the significant other gets so tired of hearing or being accused of doing these things that they actually go out and do them so and the thought process with that is if i'm going to be accused of doing it i might as well do it doesn't make it right but that is a result of a person with the relationship insecurity that what they can manifest in their relationships just by having that insecurity. A social insecurity. Social insecurities are not having faith in your abilities to do well and succeed in social settings. Now, this can be school, this can be work, any type of social setting where you're going to be around other people. It's also connected to your anxiety about the future. Social anxiety overlaps, I'm sorry, social insecurity overlaps with social anxiety. And it causes you to appear as if you're awkward. And, you know, sometimes you say things inappropriate or you feel that you're not smart enough because you're constantly in your head. You're not able to fully assess the social situation because you're constantly worried about what it is that you're doing and how it will be perceived or if you're going to do it right. I've suffered social anxiety before and I, as always, we are humans, we are works in progress. So yes, I've suffered social anxiety. I've worked very hard on overcoming social anxiety, but sometimes I still suffer it, especially when I'm around new people, people that I don't know. You will find me alone in a corner somewhere until I get not just the feel of who they are, but the feeling that I for me, it's a I'm safe type of thing. So it, it it looks like me assessing everything in the situation before I'm able to be social and feel that I'm safe and that I'm not worried about whether I'm going to say the right thing or the wrong thing because it's you're going to accept me it, and you don't have to, but the hope is that you're going to accept me for who I am right in this moment. So the next type of insecurity is body image insecurity. Now, especially with magazines and social media, body image insecurity is probably one of the top insecurities currently. You know, this is when people perceive their physical perception or their physical appearance inaccurately. And so that's things like body dysmorphia, where you can look at yourself in the mirror and you can see your, you could be 150 pounds, but you look at yourself in the mirror and you see yourself as a 350 pound woman. You know, body image insecurity, you know, you have all these Instagram models, you have all of these beautiful people on social media that you begin to compare yourself to them and you don't feel good about yourself and your body because you don't match up to the people that you see on social media. So you spend all of this time worrying about how you look and and it could be your whole body as 
a whole or in just different parts of your body. But you spend all of this time caught up in your appearance, how you look, how your body looks compared to others with, and you don't spend the time working on the things that you may want to change because you don't really know what you want to change. You just know that you are not matching the images that you're seeing. The last type of insecurity is job insecurity. And this is just feelings of being inadequate at work. Within the workplace, you know, there's always doubt, there's confusion, there's hesitation, and it's ultimately uncertainty about your job. Not necessarily that you're incapable of doing the job because you're there. They hired you, so you're capable of doing a job. But again, you measure yourself up against other people without knowing their background, without knowing their situations, without knowing their qualifications. So you are always uncertain. You're always hesitant about the things that you're doing in the job, which could result in you losing your job because you're not giving the productivity that the job actually needs. So what we're going to talk about next is where insecurities come from. So we know what insecurities are. We know the symptoms of insecurity. But where do they come from? And how are we affected by them? Insecurities can come from lack of family emotional support. We all know that some of us have loving families and some of us don't. But when you have loving families, it's a whole lot easier to deal with your insecurities because you have people to talk to. You have a support system to help you venture down whatever path it is that you choose to help correct or overcome your insecurities. Insecurities come from lack of physiological the lack of the physiological need satisfaction. So most of us probably have heard of Maslow's hierarchy of needs. When your needs are not met, hunger, you know, the need to feel safe, the need for relationships, these type of things. And if, if you don't know what Maslow's hierarchy of needs are, let me know and I will make sure to I can do a video about it or I'll just answer the question directly. But when your needs are not met, you suffer from insecurities. You, We talk about attachment styles in children, but those attachment styles kind of lead to who we are as adults. So if you have parents that are always there for you, always nurturing you when you're a child, chances are, your needs are met. So you don't have insecurities in that area. But if you have parents who let you cry, don't tend to your needs, things like that, there you go. Your needs are not being met. So you're insecure. You don't know if you'll ever get that type of affection. So growing up, it, it hinders you from certain things. It becomes an insecurity in situations like relationships, jobs, all of those things. So when your need, basically when your needs are not met, you're not satisfied and you develop an insecurity. Lack of emotional intelligence is another place that insecurities come from. Low emotional intelligence is you're not able to monitor your feelings or the feelings of others, and that can lead to unhealthy relationships. So when you're overly trusting, you get taken advantage of, chances are you get taken advantage of because you're overly trusting. So you're not able to monitor when someone is lying to you or putting you in a situation that can possibly harm you because you lack that emotional intelligence. A lack of openness is another place that insecurities come from. So when we talk about being open, that relates to your mindset. So people who have open minds have growth mindsets that they know they're constantly wanting to learn, they're constantly wanting to do things, they're constantly wanting to change because they know that they can get better. But when you have a lack of openness, you have a fixed mindset and you don't want to change. You don't want to grow. You just say it is what it is. And when you have a lack of openness or that fixed mindset, 
it often leads to more stress because you're constantly worried how you can do something with what you have instead of learning how you can do something with what you have and go out and get more or learn more so that you're able to do the task better. So insecurity can come from anything um, that we experience on a daily basis as well, like poor academic performance, stressful situations, abusive and neglectful relationships, chronic medical conditions, mental health conditions, all of these things can contribute to our insecurities. All of these things that I just named are all can also be a result of insecurities. Um, for the poor academic performance, my son is a senior in high school. The school that he goes to, they have this new type of math class. The teacher doesn't explain, he just shows them how to do the work with no explanation. Everyone does not learn the same. My child is one of those people, you need to teach them the steps. You need to teach them the steps and allow them to work through the steps so that they are able to get it. The teacher wasn't helping him. No one else was helping him. So I took it upon myself to invest in a tutor, a tutor that was going to take the time to show him what it is that he needed to learn, the way that he needed to be able to process it so that he can be successful. Before I got the tutor, my son, and remind you, his senior year, I don't know how I'm going to do this. Because, of course, he needs the math to graduate. I don't, he, I'm trying, I'm trying, and I'm just not getting it. So he was feeling insecure about who he was in that moment. The fact of whether or not he was, would be able to graduate because he did not know whether or not he would pass his class. After the tutor, after the first session with the tutor. He said, I feel so much better because now I know what I'm doing. I'm able to follow along and understand what's going on. So people think that some these things, poor academic performance, does not come from insecurities or does not lead to insecurities, but they do. You just have to pay attention because not everyone is going to tell you. He was not going to tell me that he was insecure about these things. I paid attention, I watched, and I saw that he was insecure. So everyone's not able to articulate their insecurities to you at all times. You just have to be mindful and pay attention sometimes, especially if you are trying to help someone. Like if you are a mentor, a therapist, a coach, you need to be able to pay attention to these things because sometimes people are not going to verbally tell you you have to look at the nonverbal cues and sometimes to understand it. So what are the signs of insecurity? As you can see, I have them all listed here. You can take your time and read them, but there are always signs for things. Most of the time we ignore the signs until it gets to be an issue so big that it becomes the elephant in the room and cannot be ignored. So I'll tell you how Low self-esteem and perceptions of low self-worth have affected me. Not that I didn't feel that I was pretty. Not that I didn't believe that I had a wonderful personality because I do. And I've always known these things. But I've also been a, a heavier, fluffier girl. Growing up, it was always, you're cute someone your size you're a pretty big girl you're people don't realize when they say things like that that it is equating your beauty to your size so for me it was kind of it always was like I can't stand next to a skinny person and be pretty because I'm pretty for a big girl. I'm not pretty enough to stand next to a smaller girl and be recognized like that. Or just, I'm not good enough. 
those things, the way that people say things, the way that people do, do things in situations like that make you feel like you are not worthy, that you are not good enough to be on someone's arm or to walk in a room and shut it down on your own because of the size that you are. Doesn't bother me now because I know better now. I've worked through that with a coach, with a therapist. I've worked through these things. So it doesn't bother me now because I know who I am. I know that I'm a beautiful person inside and out. And I know my worth. And trust me, I double it and I charge tax because I'm worth everything that you are going to give me and more. There are so many different ways that we can see insecurity in people. High levels of anxiety and stress. We all know people walk around anxious and stressed all the time. It's not just, and you they might say, oh, I'm stressed about my job. What is it about your job that you're stressed? Is it a job insecurity? Are you thinking that you're not doing, you're not bringing in the numbers like you used to, so you have become insecure and now you're stressed trying to figure out how to correct it? Let me speak on something, you know, everyone, male and female, boys and girls, suffer from insecurities. There are 54% of women ages 18 to 40 who are unhappy with their body because of body insecurity. Men are also unhappy with their bodies. But 33% of the time, women internalize it more than men. And I, I can't speak as to why men don't express it the same way that women do, but men and women both have insecurities and they don't sometimes know how to deal with them. They don't know how to express them. So being able to identify these insecurities, know what your insecurities are, know what your symptoms of these insecurities are, allows you to identify them. And once you're able to identify them, you are now able to overcome your insecurities. So ways that we can overcome our insecurities. Acknowledge the role the insecurities play in your daily life. No, everyone may not suffer with their insecurities on a daily basis, but you have to know the role that it plays in your life. Before you can overcome it, you have to be honest with yourself and say, my insecurity of having low self-esteem keeps me from doing a, B, and C. And when you're able to honestly acknowledge that and acknowledge how it keeps you from being productive, how it keeps you from making friends, how it keeps you from putting yourself out to the world because you can have wonderful ideas, but if you're insecure and lack self-confidence, you're not putting yourself out there for people to hear these things. And like I said, I'm human. I've had I've I've worked through these things, but again, sometimes I still have issues with them. And it's okay. No one says that you're going to work through these things and you're going to be able you're just going to be huh, never have that problem again. That is a wonderful concept, but the truth is we are still human. We still have issues sometimes with things that we've worked through. But now we have the tools so that it doesn't drag us back down into the places we were before we've healed these things, before we've worked on these things. Assess where the insecurity comes from. We internalize a lot of insecurities, but we don't always have to because some of the insecurities don't come from us some of the insecurities come from the people around us we always talk about being mindful of who you have around you and this is very true because someone who is insecure in them in themselves can place their insecurities on you and now you're dealing with something 
that you've never had to dealt with deal with before because they worked their insecurity into you slowly and surely day after day after day so be fully cognizant of where that insecurity comes from does it come from someone else and you've internalized it and now you can't get rid of it or was it already there and you've never dealt with it what are the triggers that set these insecurities off what can you do differently so that you don't set these insecurities off be able to communicate about your insecurities. Like I said, most of the time, people don't talk about their insecurities. They want to keep the feelings to themselves because they're uncomfortable about talking about it. And sometimes they're just downright embarrassed. Not even considering or not even caring that everyone at some point or another suffers from these things, from insecurities. So find somebody that you trust, not four people, not two people, not three people. One person that you trust that you can share your insecurities with. Because we don't want to continuously talk about the insecurities. We want to express how we're feeling, how these insecurities affect us, come up with a game plan to start working away from these insecurities. We don't want to tell person A the insecurities because I trust them. And then person B, I trust as well, but I got to tell them my insecurities. And then you get to person C. So that's three people you told these insecurities to three different times. And each time you're telling these stories about your insecurities, you're anchoring your insecurities more and more. The more you anchor them, the harder it's going to be for you to pull away from them and get rid of them. So don't find multiple people. Find one person that you can trust to have these conversations with to fully open up about your insecurities. And that person should be able to help you come up with a game plan as to how to get over these insecurities. Now, you focus on your positives. A lot of the times, especially when we're having our insecure moments, all we can see are the negative things. Stop focusing on the negative. When you think about negative, it brings more negative. We want to focus on the positive. We don't want to remain in that negative mindset. So, yes, you are experiencing these insecurities about these things, but what's good about you? What is on the other side of those insecurities that's a positive? Start to think more positively and you have more positive experiences. You have more positive feelings. The next one, take care of your physical health. Change is great. You know, some of us don't like it, but we have to make sure that we are taking care of ourselves ment mentally and physically and the same health as well. And that is true. We have to be physically healthy in order to improve our mental health. So, and it's not, oh, I'm going to go out and do a triathlon tomorrow. You can start by making small changes, especially if you are not living an active lifestyle. If you're not living a healthy lifestyle, small changes daily. Incorporate exercise into some of your daily activities are exercise, walking. I have a flight of stairs outside of my house and three flights of stairs inside of my house. You know what? I get my exercise from walking up and down those stairs every day. I'm not spending extra money by doing joining a gym. I don't have to leave the inside of my house. I'm in my home walking up the stairs. That's a small change. Once I master that, I can move on to something else. But just make sure to incorporate these small changes because it will overall benefit your physical health, which will benefit your mental health, will allow you to see things a lot clearly and start to begin to eat away at those insecurities because you're doing things to make yourself healthier better.
If losing weight is something that you want to do, those small changes add up to big results. <clears throat> Sometimes you need to accept your limitations. We all have them. We need to accept them. But when you accept your limitations, don't discount yourself. Accept your limitations and celebrate the things that make you different. We're not all the same. We're not meant to be the same. Think about how boring the world would be if everyone was the same, if everyone thought the same, if everyone looked the same, if everyone did the same thing. It would be a boring place to live. It honestly, for me, it would probably be like talking to yourself 24 seven. Who wants that? Yes. Talking, spending time with yourself and everything is great, but who wants to do it every day? You want to shine. You want to stand out from the crowd. The best way to do that is to be able to know how you're different, to celebrate those differences. Some of those differences are the things that we are most insecure about because they don't fit in with everyone else. And honestly, we are not meant to fit in with everyone else. We're not. We're meant to shine. We're meant to be different. We're meant to embrace everything about ourselves so that we can be the best version of ourselves. That's what this is all about. Being who we want to be on our terms. And in order to do that, you have to overcome the insecurities. You have to embrace your differences. You have to be who you were supposed to be. We're unapologetically. So in the last way you can overcome insecurities is by pursuing professional care. That can look like a therapist, that can look like a coach. And sometimes it can look like you having a therapist and a coach at the same time. I've been to a therapist at one point in my life. Now I work with a coach. Some people do them at the same time because they want to make sure that they are being held accountable for themselves because that we are only accountable for us. We can only take charge of us. We can't take charge of anyone else. But you can have someone there making sure that you're doing what it is that you need to do. Whichever way is best for you, whether it is a therapist, whether it's a coach, Whichever way is best for you, that's how you should do it. If you need to talk to someone to see, hey, if I'm a good fit, let's see if we are, we're going to be a good fit together. I offer potential clients a free session with me just so that we can see if we're going to be a good fit together. Because I don't want someone to work with me that does not feel like I'm helping them. And I don't want to work with someone who is fighting back at me, pushing back at me every single time I open my mouth, trying to hold being, holding them accountable for what their actions are. So you have to make sure either way, whether you go therapist or coach or both, you need to make sure that they are a good fit for you. So I'm going to leave you with this. Insecurities are only as powerful against you when you refuse to act like they exist. No one's perfect. I don't think in the history of man, anyone has ever been perfect. Sometimes we are all experience insecurities. Your insecurities are only as powerful against you when you refuse to acknowledge they exist. Because when you don't acknowledge they exist, you cannot do anything about them. Now, if you have any questions, now's the time to unmute yourself or drop it in the chat box and I will answer them either in a video or right now, depending on the depth of the answer that I have. So let's keep in touch. I love to keep up with everyone and I want you to keep up with me. So you can follow me on Facebook at Coach Keisha Golder. You can follow me on YouTube at Keisha Golder, LinkedIn, Keisha Golder. And of course, go to my website, 
www.keishagoda.com. There you will find blogs. You will find previous web classes. You'll be able to sign up for future web classes. And you will find the opportunity to sit down and chat with me to see if, if you want to work with a coach, if I'm the perfect person for you. Next web class, we are going to talk about learning to live authentically, how to be comfortable with being you so that you know who you are and you're able to follow your desires to get your life that you want. Uh, this is the life purpose makeover journey. Like I said, it's a three-stage non-step program. Everyone does not need to do every step of the program, but there will be times where we are going to work on things if you decide to work with me so that we can overcome the blockages, the limiting beliefs, so that we can get to the nitty gritty of who we are. We know our values. We understand our strengths our talents, the skills that we have, what we're interested in, our passions, how our experiences in life have helped to shape our beliefs. How do we envision our life? What do we feel our purpose is? And at the end of all of that, we'll have the paradigm, the complete blueprint for us to go out here and create the life that we want. Not just today, not just tomorrow, but anytime we feel that we want to change or we're pursuing another purpose, we'll be able to do that and know that it is a solid plan because we've done the steps and we have the blueprints. We have the process to get there the next go round. I want to thank everyone for joining me tonight and I look forward to seeing you all next week.